there! Welcome to Skeleton Key Productions. I'm Carl Gomez Cocon. Let's get into the video. Today's video, we're going to be continuing with our director's Bug Fever playlist. In today's video, we're going to be looking at none other than Don Bluth, who was born in 1937 and is still alive to the present day. So, if you like what you've seen already, don't forget to obviously hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell button so you're so notified, and also don't forget to check out our many other videos from the different playlists. I promise that you will not be disappointed. And also we have to give a massive shout out to Sour Crime. So they left a comment in the last video and so as a result they're getting a shout out. And the same could happen for you if you leave a comment in this video. In the next video you will end up getting a shout out. So this is a new thing that we're trying from now on. And uh, yeah, so if you want a shout out of your very own, don't forget to obviously leave a comment in the comment section. Also as well, we should say that in our last video, if you haven't seen it already, we were looking at Wolfgang Reifman and we were looking at how he continued the legacy of Walt Disney after Disney had died. But after Wolfgang Reifman died, Disney studio kind of went into the era of so-called rock bottom. So during this time, while Disney was at rock bottom, this is where a certain person who used to work for Disney actually capitalized on all of that. So that's essentially going to be the story of Don Bluth. So without further ado, we're going to dive straight now into his biography. So buckle up, let's go for the ride. Don Bluth was born in El Paso, Texas in 1937 to a family of Mormons. And actually, as it turns out, he's actually a distant relative of Mitt Romney, who is the presidential candidate in the 2012 presidential election. So just a little bit of trivia with regard to that. And from a very young age, he went to go and see every Disney film that he could watch. And he would try and get his hand on every single Disney comic book that was sold in order for him to copy some of the drawings. And from a very young age, you can really see his fascination with the world of animation. Now, at age six, he ended up moving with his family to a family farm in Utah. And at age 17, they end up moving from Utah to Santa Monica in California. So at this age here, he was 17 years old and this was in 1954. And the reason why he moved was so that he could go to Brigham Young University, which is a very prestigious Mormon university. And he stayed there for one year. Now, in 1955, Don ended up being hired by John Lounsbury, who is one of Disney's nine old men. And this is where he ended up being put to work, working on Sleeping Beauty, which of course was meant to be the big classic that Disney wanted. So we'll check that video out for more information. However, for whatever reason, Don Bluth, he found the work, in his words, kind of boring. And so by 1957, he ended up leaving. So of course, Sleeping Beauty came out in 1959. He didn't even stay on long enough to have the whole thing finished. But during this time, this is where he ended up going to Argentina for two and a half years. And this is where he was doing his Mormon missionary work over there. So when he returned to America in 1959, this is where he ended up working at a local theater in California. And this is where he was doing work producing musicals, such as The Music Man and also The Sound of Music. Before he ended up getting once again into animation, and this is where he ended up working for the company Filmation. So it was there that Don ended up working on The Archie Show and also Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which I didn't even know it was actually that old, but fair enough, right? Uh, so he ended up uh, working on that. And then eventually he ended up being rehired by Disney. And this was to do work on Robin Hood, which of course came out in 1973, but he ended up being hired in 1971 before going on in 1974 to work on Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2. And then fast forward a few years, he ended up working on Pete's Dragon, which is going to be the next video that we're going to cover. Definitely stay tuned for that. But he also, of course, ended up becoming the animating director for The Rescuers, which is, again, another film which we've already covered. So definitely go and check that one out to see more of uh, how he influenced that film. However, by the time it came to Fox and the Hound, which came out in 1981, there ended up being some problems. And mainly this was to do with the fact of uh, Don Bluth and many of the other younger animators end up clashing with the Disney studios. And the main clash was with regard to who had creative control. So on his 42nd birthday in 1979, this is where Don Bluth and several other animators from the Disney team end up walking out. And this is where they end up setting up Don Bluth Productions, 
which later would end up being changed to the Southern Blue Studios. So the very first film that he did was The Secret of Nim, which came out in 1982, and this was an absolutely roaring success. Followed on by An American Tale, which came out in 1986, The Land Before Time, which came out in 1988, and also All Dogs Go to Heaven in 1989. So all these films were very, very profitable. However, the reason why they were profitable is like we said in the previous video, this is where Disney end up hitting rock bottom. So during this time, it kind of gave an opportunity for Don Bluth to come through and basically be a competitor to the Disney Studios. However, by the late 80s, yeah, you end up having the so-called Disney Renaissance. So this is with Little Mermaid, which we'll cover in a future video. And this is where Disney started to make a comeback. And from this point on, with only one major exception, this is where Don Bluth's films end up starting to take a financial hit. So for instance, even Thumbelina, which in my opinion is a really great film, which came out in 1994, that ended up going absolutely bust. And with the exception of Anastasia, which came out in 1997, none of his other films from this period end up making a profit. And so Don Bluth in 1994 had to end up selling uh, the studios to Fox Animation Studios and this was basically the end of his company. So I should say that Don Bluth is still very much alive and he is still doing work, albeit producing much uh, lower scale animations. But the reason why I said the story of Don Bluth is because his story is very um, pivotal to the development of Walt Disney. So first of all, he came up through the studio. Second of all, when the studios end up taking a nosedive, he ended up revitalizing them through competing with them. And then on top of that, when Disney ended up having its renaissance in the late 80s, early 90s, his company ended up, well, going under. But we still managed to get some absolutely fantastic films, which many people from my generation, we actually forget that they're not actually Disney films. That's how good those films are. You know, American Tale, Land Before Time, uh, you know, Anastasia, Fumbelina, those films there, absolutely brilliant, you know, Secret of Nim, very scary film, <laughs> but those films there are brilliant. And at some point we will probably cover them. But for now, we have to say, if you like this video, don't forget obviously hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell button so you stay notified, and also stay tuned for our next video, which is going to be Pete's Dragon 1977. So with all that being said, don't forget obviously leave a comment in the video for a shout out and in the meantime, have a great day and bye.